Hello, hello, and hello, and welcome to the Cup Podcast, where we put the real and the tea in reality, and we uh, you can always come to us first to quench your thirst. I'm your girl, Lana, your resident evil diva, and I'm here to give the tea, spill the tea, and drink the tea, because you know I love me some tea. And if you have something you know what to do, hit me up. I'm not drinking anything, y'all, because I'm no longer thirsty, so... If you stay hydrated, you ain't got to get hydrated. That's how I feel. So I'm not doing that. But I do have my cup mug always handy just in case. And you can get your cup mug or any of our cup merch at lanagescreations.etsy.com. That link will be in the description below. And uh, we do ship internationally. And we do ship domestically here in the United States, Mexico. And Canada, Canada, I'm looking at you. So get your cup merge. Period. Well, I'm David Healy, and I don't have a cute intro, but I do have a cute shirt. Um, I decided to wear my Miss Fifth Delicious shirt. There she is. Miss Fabulicious. Love her and love this shirt. I think this may be the shirt I've worn the on the most podcasts to be honest because i wore it every episode of the traders that she was on when we were talking about the traders canada and i've worn it several other times as well um but as far as drink goes i just had a dr pepper and now i'm just drinking the last remnants of my water hi i am river your brazilian correspondent here on the cup and today i actually have a cute shirt and a cute mug. I decided, because I love the runway theme for this episode, I decided to join in. So I'm wearing my Woodstock shirt. And because 60s, I have my Beatles at the Road mug to be on theme. Yes. And I'm just drinking some water because we've been talking all day and I need it. I love that for you. That's great. That's a great mug. We're, we're say, approaching hour six of the day. <laughs> of the day. Uh, you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. When there's drag race to be talked about, that's what the cup is going to be, talking about it. So, period. And since you're here and you're checking us out, hit the subscribe button. We're trying to get us to 2,000, and we're almost there. We're almost there. So, y'all, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to this channel. Tell your friends about it. Share, 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 and do all the things. And hit the notification bell so you don't miss a single video. Also, in the descriptions, you can find all the links to all of our other channels as well. We're trying to get 1,000 to all of our channels. So, if you want to go and support our other channels, that would be amazing, especially the TV. But TV, that would be the one I would love the most. But all of them would love, love, love to get up there. So if you would support all of those and go subscribe to all of our team, our um, channels, we would greatly, greatly appreciate you. As well as going to follow us on our audio podcast links if you want to listen to us on the go. And our Patreon is also in that link down below in the description. So click those links, click all those things, do all those things, support all those and we will appreciate you so we can continue to give you amazing content. Now, huh, we are here talking about Canada versus the world, episode five. And I know those who have followed Canada versus the world are like, and who are you? Where have you been? We don't even know you. How are you up here hosting something? We don't even know who you are. You're right. I ain't been here. But I'm here now, and I'm here to talk about this episode and we'll see if I'll be back next week. We'll see. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and the finale. I might just wrap it up and do the finale and do and be done with it. So, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, we're talking about episode five. And it starts off, we I have just lost Titanomi. 
We we lost Eureka last week. Oh, Eureka last week. Mm-hmm. Panomi was week four last. Eureka this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm-hmm. lost Eureka. Everybody's a little sad because she's the first U.S. girl to, to leave the competition thus mm-hmm. far, and everybody's like, "Oh no, oh no." Pierce was upset because she had to send her friend home. So yeah. Yeah, and yeah. it was kind of sad. And Eureka sure did leave a lot for her to erase. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, that mirror, uh, and there was a dick on the mirror too. So uh, good for Eureka for her drawing skills. Uh, I love Eureka for that. But uh, yeah, we, we get into like a little bit of talking about um, Fierce losing her zero. And then she has questions. She has questions for Kennedy. She's mm-hmm. like... And this is where I think my favorite quote of the episode oh. comes very early on. And it's when Fierce Delicious says, Kennedy, can you explain like why you didn't save me? And then Kennedy says, and here's the quote. This is my, my favorite quote. She says, first of all, you have to remember what you said. <laughs> and that's all she needed to say because uh, last week, Fierce told everybody in Untucked that she didn't want the Golden Beaver and that she wanted to lip sync. And so all Kennedy had to do was say, first of all, you have to remember what you said. And Fierce is like, <laughs> okay, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I said what I said. And yeah, mm-hmm. right. <laughs> got you to lip sync, but you won. Yep. So congratulations to that. I'm going to have to add that to my quotes. Like yes. anytime no, no. somebody comes from me, I'll have to be like, First of all, you have to remember what you said. <laughs> Word. Mic drop. <laughs> Period. Period. Kennedy is so good with one-liners. She's just so entertaining she all the is. time. She's one Beautiful. of the most quotable drag race queens ever. Like we still quote her. I still send people like the they're gonna meme me yo ass <laughs> quote. <laughs> so she's great. Oh my god. Yeah. But, yeah, we do get some conversations and a little, like you said, a little stuff from happen from Untucked that they talk about. But then they get out of drag and we go on to the next day. Mm-hmm. Next day, everybody's like, woo, all right. So now that we had time to debrief and relax, how are we feeling? And um, everybody's like, we're good. We're fine. Mm-hmm. I'm better now. I'm not in my feelings anymore. I'm good. <laughs> Feel sad about you, Rita, but good. And of right. course, the thing, everything happens. The Rouge already had has hers. Is. Well, I do want to bring up. Oh, uh, go ahead. Bring up whatever oh. y'all want to bring up. You, you yeah, go I mean, ahead. It might be the Let's same thing. Maybe is, is it lemon? Oh no, it's not. Okay. Because I don't know if it was uh, it happened before um, they they got uh, the Brooke came in the room or if it was after, but I know it was in the workroom in the beginning of the episode where Lemon was talking and crying about how she was like so proud of herself, and it just I love Lemon so much and it's just the way that she was so genuine about that and like the, the way that she was describing her journey with like being able to feel pr- be, feel proud of herself. Uh, and crying and just that got me because I re- I just related because that recently went through a similar journey so like mm. I just wanted to to take a moment to talk about that and because that really I already loved her but I'm kind of loving her um, more each episode. Yeah, I feel like it's not very often that we p- get people like just to like break down about how scared they are coming into a season. So it was kind of refreshing, like getting that honesty. And I feel like if anybody has a right to be scared, it should be her after her experience. Like she had, she had such a following um, after her season of Canada and then to go out first in UK versus the world. And so many people were disappointed. She must've felt the weight of the world and she she couldn't let fans down. She didn't let me down, though. Like, uh, the, the person that let me down was whoever cut her. Who was it that cut her? Was that Janie? No. Janie was in the bottom then. I don't remember. It was Wasn't it, mm, Pangina. Wasn't it Pangina? Yeah, Pangina let me down then. I think. <laughs> oh. Mm-hmm. 
but um yeah i just i just really appreciated that she was like so vulner vulnerable about that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but the thing i wanted to talk about before we get the alarm was uh the fact that they were talking about oh they're so close to the top four oh who's gonna make the top four and then alexa says and i cannot believe she said this she's like uh, I, I mean, it could be anybody that makes the top four as long as it isn't you and points at Cheryl. And I'm like, oh, and Cheryl's like, why? And she's like, because I want it to be uh, U.S. versus Canada at the end. I'm like, OK, <laughs> way to be blunt and like single out poor Cheryl, who's been in the top three out of four episodes. But <laughs> Her tone seemed very poignant. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So did mm -hmm. her finger when she so pointed at finger. you. Right. When she actually literally mm -hmm. pointed at her, it was mm -hmm. like, I want you gone. And I was like, oop, well, yep. yes, you better win. And <laughs> it, it was interesting. But yeah, that did happen. All that happened before. Then the alarm happens. Brooklyn comes in and lets them know that the challenge for the week is a rusical. But not just any rusical is a rusical of the snatch game, a snatch game rusical. And I was like, This is, mm. I didn't like it. I'm gonna be honest, up front, straight. I did not like it because I felt like it took. Why would you take two staples and then try to merge them together because they don't work? Because what if the person that I came to do for Snatch Game not go with this rusical at all? And now you're making me force something into something that don't go together. Like, none of... I, I did not enjoy this rusical at all. I didn't enjoy <laughs> it. I didn't like it. I didn't... I sat here and was like, mm-mm. Because you want the snatch, I want the snatch game to be the snatch game. I want to see people do the snatch game because they prepare for this. They look, they they work hard to get ready for a snatch game, and they have these characters that they're ready to play. And now it feels like you're stripping them of half of the stuff that they work for because now you're making them put it in a rusical, and the parts of the rusical might not, may or may not go with the per. Like, I only think one person's character went with, with this rule school. One person's mm -hmm. character. Because it was a singer. Absolutely. So it made sense. Mm -hmm. It made sense. Yes. Everybody else made like, no sense to me. Am I alone? I agree with you. No, I agree. I I don't, I'm not even, I'm going to cut it short. I agree with you 1,000% every word, syllable, and letter, and period. Okay. Well, dang it. Now I wish Logan was here because I know Logan <laughs> liked this and we, we could use somebody <laughs> to disagree. Because you, so you disagree too? You think no, it was I bad? don't. I, I, yeah, I'm with you all. Um, I was actually pretty optimistic going into this episode because when I saw it was Snatch Game the Rusical, I'm like, guys, they're not going to make them play the actual Snatch Game and do a Rusical around it. Come on, guys. What they're doing, clearly, is they're taking iconic Snatch Game characters from the past, and they've already built a Rusical. And it's going to be cool. It's going to be great. It's going to work. There's no way they're going to make them incorporate their actual Snatch Game characters into a Rusical. Uh, I thought the exact same thing. Yeah, I was right. I thought it was going to be more like... Um, I don't know which one that I think it was All Stars Two, where they had the Women of the World thing. Mm -hmm. That it was a musical, but it was assigned parts. It was mm -hmm. like, oh, Alaska, you're gonna be Eve, you're gonna be this, you're gonna be that. I thought it was gonna be more like that, it, and be like, um, the story of the Snatch Game of like kind of what they did in the beginning of the challenge, and then instead of uh, having the girls be like choosing their characters, I thought they were going to do like All-Stars 2 and be like, okay, so we're going to do Snatch Game the Rusical with these characters, 
maybe the girls could have like cast themselves as the characters. It, it didn't have to be mm-hmm. assigned by production. But I think the characters shouldn't have been the characters that the girl the girls prepared for the original Snatch Game. Right. That was the mistake for me. Yeah. Because the idea I actually enjoyed, but the way that they did it, mm-hmm. no. I do have Sorry. more. Next. <laughs> I have more specific uh, complaints about everything that went on, but I want to save that for when we actually get to mm-hmm. the the uh, snatch game. Mm-hmm. So maybe we should talk about the dividing of songs because yes. that sure we, generates. Mm-hmm. A <laughs> we, we could talk mm-hmm. about that because everybody goes, they listen to the songs and before anybody really could get through the song or the list of songs, Cheryl said, I want the bottom one. Yeah. Requiem for a bottom. Requiem for the bottom. For a bottom. I and just want to like, say, I love that. I love that. Song name, title. Uh-huh. <laughs> so good. Right before yes. bottom, and then Alexa was like, "Because you've been at the bottom," and she was like, <laughs> "Sure, right." But I think this fits okay. me, and I love it. I want it, and so Miss Kennedy Davenport, Davenport was like, "I too want that song," and Cheryl said, "Well, it's mine," and I was like, "Oh." You know, and and Kennedy was like, "Oh, we just we we just doing that. We like we didn't even have a chance to listen to it. Really, you just it's, you just dashed it up, yep. and she wasn't happy. Everybody else decided to pick songs that they liked, and they're like, this is what I want. This is what I want.' And um, Cheryl was like, "Look, look, I have been nice to everybody. I have put other people before me. When? And I'm not doing it this time." <laughs> I'm Alexis going, is like, you've never done that. Right. Like, what are you doing? And Alexis, she like, I, she's so <laughs> real <laughs> and like doesn't give any any ish. Any, said, any at all. When, when did you do that? You've never done that for me. And Look, she was like everybody needs a friend like Alexis because <laughs> she will ride or die for you. This was not Absolutely. her fight. She made it her fight because her and Kennedy are cool like that. Mm-hmm. And I was living for it. But honestly, at this point, I'm kind of seeing the perspectives of both Cheryl and Kennedy. I'm like, you both mm-hmm. want that? Sure, fight for it. Don't don't sacrifice for it. Like right. I respected both of them. It does change mm-hmm. at some point. It does change. It does. And I get on a team specific person. Um, but that's when they're all going around. So we do see uh pretty much everybody else else has like one specific song that they want and Mm -hmm. nobody else is really fighting for that so lemon gets hers alex alexis gets hers fierce gets hers and then we're left over with the flop tango and so they bring up the flop tango and then immediately cheryl just starts pointing at kennedy and kennedy's like okay i'll take it you You don't don't have have to point point. (laughs) and i became team kennedy you don't have to do that. Like that's just rude. And guess what? You you won, and now you're being an ungraceful winner. Like, come on, just be like, "Hey, Kennedy, I really appreciate that." Don't just it, it rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know, River. Do you do you have a different perspective on this little drama? A little, you know, like yes, but just a little bit. I'm I mostly agree with you. And here's the thing: I do agree with you. But also, I kind of think that Cheryl was doing that playfully. Like, yes, I think. Okay, so here's what I think. When Cheryl said that she was like, oh, because I'm always putting other people first. I'm like, okay, maybe you are. But first, that's a choice that you made. Mm -hmm. Nobody made you put yourself after other people. You chose to do that. So, but also, I understand Um doing that for so long and then realizing you're doing that and then deciding to do different. So I understand being a little like sensitive and bringing that up, but like I understand her feeling, but it's not other people's problem to deal with that. Like you need to, I have empathy. I understand, but it's like, it's not a reason for other people to give you the part that you want. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Uh, But then when Kennedy didn't fight 
for the part, she was kind of doing exactly what Cheryl said that she's been doing, which is like not fighting for it and letting other people have their way to kind of like not have conflict or whatever, or to be nice. I don't know. Um, but like, I'm not team anyone. I just love that we had a little bit of drama that was like not serious enough, but real, but it like, yeah. it was solved quickly. So that's fair. Well, I guess you know. I've been in a similar situation where I'm like, I concede something and then I don't like, and I don't even need like you to show me a bunch of gratitude when I concede something, but don't, don't be kind of bitchy about it after I've already don't given throw it, it in my you. face. Yeah. yeah. Don't throw it in my face. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I, I agree. And at that point mm -hmm. I would be like, yeah, I think you would have been nice instead yeah. of whatever you're giving me right now. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. I think after I've got it, and it wasn't like Kennedy was going back and forth with her. Like they didn't have a, no, I want it. No, I want it. Why you get it? I want to take it because I mm -hmm. feel like it was just like, I want this song. Well, I want this song. Everybody else start picking the song. And she was like, and they got back to that song. And she's like, okay, I'll take the song. Knowing you already want, you want the song. She wasn't like, I still want that song. Like she could have been ten toes down too. Like I want this song. Mm -hmm. So what we go do? How we go solve it? Yeah. But I, I do think what I don't like though is that if you're going to concede and you're going to say I'm going, I'll I'll do it. Don't be sour about you, it. Don't, don't be, be mad about, about it. it. Yeah. Don't be mad about it. Don't, Again, that was your choice. And don't be in your feelings and 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 feel like this song is not what I wanted. This is not what I wanted. And and you're taking it into the rehearsal space. You take it, you know what I mean? I just mm -hmm. feel like you have to let it go. If you concede, you made the choice to concede. Now you got to suck it up and let it go. I'm like, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to take this. Even though I didn't like it, I'm going to make the best of it. And I'm going to make you regret for making me get this song. Because you're like, dang, that song was fire. Mm. And I should have took it. I'm about to take it, flip it, reverse it, and make you feel real bad about making me take this because you could have had this fire song. But she, I don't feel like Kennedy did that. And I don't even think and I think she was one of the people who suffered with this musical snatch game. That was, it's just great, but we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah. What up? Yeah, and then we do get a little I, bit, oh, sorry. We get a little discussion about what characters people were thinking about mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. And Kennedy, she she was leaning towards Tabitha Brown once she realized mm -hmm. that it was a musical, but she had thought about Cat Williams. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I could totally see you making Cat Williams work. You know, I don't know if you know this, Lana, but Kennedy Davenport is the first person that ever did a male character on Snatch mm -hmm. Game. And okay. Kennedy got a win as um, Little Richard. And it was so okay. good. It was so good. And it was a game changer. Shut up. Yeah, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Uh so like I thought that would have been a really cool character. And it's and it kind of sucks that the musical aspect ruined to it. it yeah, it, it, it ruined, ruined it. it. <laughs> Cause maybe she maybe she had a fully fleshed out character and ideas and answers uh behind Cat Williams. I mean, Cat and, Williams got so much material. Cat Williams has so much material she could have used for mm -hmm. just as a snatch game character like anything could have been cat like cat williams has so much material that could have been just hilarious and mm -hmm. i don't think it would have worked in the musical aspect of it yeah and i'm also very intrigued because lemon brought up that she had thought about doing jojo siwa again mm -hmm. i'm like again because we've Ooh. never seen anybody do a Snatch Game character twice. And so that makes me very curious what angle she was going to go. Because she was like young Jojo Siwa, like speech impediment Jojo Siwa. And I wonder if she was going to be like the Jojo so Siwa we know, the creator of right. gay pop. Right. Um, she, she, was, she did first, she did like um, both, like the, the bow era of Jojo mm -hmm. Siwa. And I think I 
I would imagine that uh, Lemon being a person that is very much online and with the with the memes and all of that, I think she would have done like Karma Jojo Siwa. Very bad. But like the meme the memeization, memeization uh-huh. whatever of yeah. Jojo Siwa, like that. Absolutely. After she became kind of extremely it? cringe. Mm-hmm. It would have been interested. Yeah. I think she could have did Jojo in it. a musical aspect. It would have been hilarious. It would have been mm-hmm. hilarious. She could, she could have done it for this. She could have mm-hmm. done it for this. I think JoJo Siwa would have been a perfect choice for a Rules mm-hmm. of Rules Snatch Game character. Because even, even with Susan Boyle, mm-hmm. like, first of all, and I'm gonna, this is one of my complaints about um, the Rusical is that uh, they were only actually able to be in character maybe 10% of the time. Yeah. But the 10% that, of the time that we saw her as Susan Boyle, it was really just her having an accent. And I didn't get a lot of Susan Boyle otherwise. So it's like, what could you have done with Jojo Siwa? Yeah, and I think it would have worked. It could have worked because Jojo Siwa had a very drastic change in uh, as, like, an, in her public persona, kind of. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like two very different eras. It's kind of like someone wanting to do, if someone decided to do like Miley and they did like in one Snatch game, they did Banger's Miley and then, in, or yeah. And then the other, they did like Plastic Hearts or Now. Right. Those are two different characters. Or even so Hannah Montana. I would Hannah be okay Montana. With it. And then, yeah, but that's a different character. It's just, this, it's a, true. Hannah Montana is a character. It's, it's not, Miley. I see what you mean. But yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I felt yeah. like I felt like that was one of the complaints. I was like, we did not see them in character enough to say that you know this character is good, this character is bad. But I feel like um, I don't know if because they did have Brooklyn come in and try and talk to them about their characters and what they were going to do. Um, that wasn't a whole lot that happened in that conversation. It's just fleshing out who their characters are going to be and if they think it's going to work for the rusical as well. I just want to say, these character choices are wild. And I kind of <laughs> like it. But, like, it's just... Every character choice was like... Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. Okay. For me. But yeah, I like I, it. I, I do, too. But, like, some of them I just... I feel like we were robbed. <laughs> Like mm. I like especially Alexis. I feel like there was so much potential to see what she was gonna do with this. Like, cause she she explained, and thank God they showed it because it would have made no sense if we got to the musical and she was just this baby as right. Ron DeSantis. We all would have been like, "What the heck?" But the idea of like people are taught that sort of stuff as a child, and I want to be Ron De- DeSantis when he was taught to be so afraid of gay people like i thought that was so clever and i really wish we could have seen that in a standard snatch game format agreed yeah Mm -hmm. this format robbed us from potentially great uh snatch games Mm -hmm. yeah there's a few things that i wanted to talk about um either on like during the practice um, the rehearsal with, with Hollywood, yeah, or afterwards when they were in the workroom. But the thing that stood out to the most, the most for me uh, during the rehearsal was uh, Hollywood explaining to Alexis that she needed to be very vaudeville. <laughs> she said, "Bob, I wrote Bob that down as well." Bobville is that a Canadian? Bob Bill. Is that Bob Bill? She thought it was Bobville, right? Bob yeah, Bill. Bob Bill. I don't know who the hell Bob Bill is. <laughs> I was like, what? Oh, my God. It, it was wild for me. I was like, what is she saying? Bob Bill. That's so funny. She was like, it must be a Canadian thing because I don't know that. I was like, I don't know Bob Bill. Stop it. Stop <laughs> it. That was hilarious. Bob Bill. I, yeah. That was the only thing that really stood out to me during rehearsal. I don't know about you all. I mean, for me, Kennedy, like, yeah. I don't do choreograph. 
choreography. I just go, and this mm. is what I feel, and let's just do it. I was like, okay, word. And it was it was interesting. I, I, my favorite part was it makes seeing, sense. seeing uh, Lemon. Was it Lemon? Lemon, yeah. Have to do with that split over split and over kitty. and over. And oh, I was like, you go make up, <laughs> chill out with the splits. Like, she got it, she got it, Hollywood. She got it, but yeah, that was pretty much it with the with the rehearsals. So, mm-hmm. I did they have any stuff in the workroom? They did. So, first of all, we got Cheryl, um, talking about her husband and how he's. He, I think she said he was there when she first performed in drag. Yes. Um, and they've they've been together ever since. I'm like, that's pretty cool. And they showed him, and I'm like, oh, Cheryl. Cheryl oh. is cute. <laughs> um, but then on the other side of the spectrum, like they were talking about who do you go home to? And um, Alexis brought up the fact she's like, I actually like when I go home, I'm I'm alone. There's nobody there for me. And it just seemed like she was like just realizing that that's her life. And she's had to just accept that that's how it's maybe always going to be. And honestly, when she was talking about this, I'm like, why is that low key relatable? Like mm-hmm. I, I kind of feel the same way. I've been single for almost seven years now. And I've just kind of resigned myself to that that's, that's how it's going to be. Because right. I've never, like, I've mm-hmm. never been close to, like, a really serious relationship. I've had, mm-hmm. I've had boyfriends, but they don't last more than four or five months. Uh, so, yeah, I just kind of related a lot to Alexis in this moment. Yeah, me too. I have never, ever been, like, close to saying, you know. I might get married or, you know, Mm -hmm. I might have this person move in together. Like I've never, ever, ever, ever been close to that in a relationship. So I'm like, I've resigned to, I'm probably going to be single the rest of my life. And you know what? I'm okay with that. I enjoy being single, but some people don't. So I don't know. I just, I don't know. I've just not thought about it until you just did. I was like, huh. Yeah. Foreign context. I've resigned to that. Interesting because I related to it a lot as well, but in a completely different way. Because um, I have had uh, I've had a few relationships, but like I have one, I had one serious relationship where I we actually lived together. It was like two years, um, and it actually um, it ended up with me going to rehab. So um, it was an extremely uh, traumatic experience. So, um, and also recently, and it was with a man. Mm -hmm. And like recently, I kind of realized that I I attracted to men sometimes, but I don't really like them. Right. Yeah. Uh Mm Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. And then I kind of realized that I'm also like in somewhere in the ACE spectrum Mm -hmm. and then Mm -hmm. finding out that I'm autistic, it kind of changed how I view uh, my relationship to other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And no, it just, I also recently kind of like cleaned out my life. I uh, cleaned out like my friend group that I had for like years that was also very toxic. And it kind of like today, the only relationship that I actually have is with my mom and my grandparents. And that's mm. it, which like I is enough for me. And I am right. so happy with that. But like, I kind of also recently kind of decided that I, uh, I'm close to like uh, having relationships with other people. Um, but I don't really want or look for that at right. all. Like, I'm not close to it, but it's not something that I desire or aim for in any way. Yeah. And it's just a diff- it's so different and it's so freeing it is and liberating. It's liberating. It is Ugh. like I have never been so fulfilled after making that decision and coming to that realization mm-hmm. and just like, it's it's so cool to see that we uh, we can all watch the same thing and relate to it and 
very deeply, but in many different ways. And I just, I just love to, to see that. Mm -hmm. I, I love that because I definitely was like, yeah, I'm happier by myself. I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna be good. I'm good, mm -hmm. but I'm not closed off to it. If it happens, honestly, this is all <laughs> I need, baby. Period. Aww. I don't even need that. You know what? I, I my do. iPad is all <laughs> I need, baby. <laughs> Oh, that but, and these, my yeah. noise canceling headphones. That's my life. Mm -hmm. Love but, it, my life. Well, well, yeah. And, and we did get but. them asking <laughs> Alexis, well, like, who who is your support? Who is in your life? And she talked about her drag family, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, it was cool. We got to see like pictures of her with different members of her drag family on the screen. We saw Vanjie, of course. We saw a few other people, and then we saw one. Uh, her name is Alicia Markstone, and I'm like. Oh, Oh, I know her. Well, I don't know her, know her, but she's come and performed at my local bar several times. I just didn't know she was in Alexis's drag family. So I thought that was kind of cool. That's cool. Yeah. But I think that's about all we had on the. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's about that time. It is about that time. Stalling. Yeah. Stalling. No need to stall. Yeah, well, I guess we did need to start, huh? Oh, I guess so. I forgot exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I forgot What's I the, had the, the lip sync cheat. Watermelon, watermelon. I, well, I, for, I forgot what pineapple. Um, I think somebody was using the watermelon, watermelon in this rusical. <laughs> oh, mm -hmm. lock that tea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A lot of watermelons. <laughs> lot of watermelons. Mm -hmm. There we go. Period. Ah, our judging panel. There they are. Fierce. <laughs> mm -hmm. Fabulous. I, I like dream. this look on Brooklyn. I will say. Yeah, I dream of Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. Period. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's. I, I think saw... that's one of my favorite looks this season. From her, oh, it's really good. I saw on Twitter. I think even I think it was Brooke that actually retweeted. Uh, somebody co said that this look is giving uh, denim and got mixed child. Mm. <laughs> and I, I, see, I, it. See, it. I yeah, see it. I see it. I can see it. I can see it. Denim and I honestly uh, love that. Denim and got mixed. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I and, think they all look great. Um, I don't know how to pronounce her name, and I don't want to butcher it. So, how do I, how do you say? It? The so woman with the right? fabulous coat. Is it Serene, or am I making that up? Thank you, Serene Fox. Yeah. Right? She yes. looks fabulous. I am obsessed with this coat. Mm -hmm. yeah, I want she this coat always so bad. Looks so good. I really want mm. this coat. Like, I don't know where you, where to find it, but I want it. Looks yeah, good. Brooke looks really good, but she stole the show for me, honestly. Okay. Mm -hmm. Good old Can Alessia I... Cara. I love yeah. her. Woohoo. Mm -hmm. Well, let's move on to the Snatch Game Rubicon. Mm -hmm. Here we are with uh, Fierce Delicious as Mother Teresa, Alexis Mateo as uh, Mother Baby. <laughs> okay. Well. <laughs> Alexis Mateo as um, baby Ron DeSantis, um, Cheryl as Queen Victoria, uh, Kennedy Davenport as uh, Tabitha Brown, and Lemon as Sarah Boyle. Or Susan Boyle. <laughs> or Susan Boyle. Or Sarah. I don't know who Sarah is. It's her Susan. sister. Oh, her sister Sarah, but I meant Susan because Susan's the one that actually did anything. Sarah's just riding on her coattails. Yep. But <laughs> but yeah, these are these this like like we said, I did not like this format. I didn't like it for them. I didn't think it was fair that they made them use the characters that they brought because it, we didn't even get to see the characters really develop anything or like the rusical aspect overshadowed the snatch game aspect. Mm -hmm. And it kind of was just like, mm, all right. In my yeah. opinion. Yeah. I, I didn't like it. I, I thought, um, so 
the way that it was formatted, we were given five different songs. And since, since they were not specific to their characters at all, they just were extremely generic songs. It would be like, Hey, if we had one about a podcast, it'd be like, Hey, I'm logging on to my computer. I'm using my microphone. Ooh, is this going to turn out? Okay. Well, it's just so generic. Like, I don't need that. Like the, the nuance of every little thing that goes into the thought process of playing snatch game as a musical. And you know, what really bugged me is the lack of rhyming. Did you all notice that? It's like, they were just like, stream of consciousness saying words and it did not rhyme it did not go together like there was no sort of musicality and that's not for everybody there's a couple of exceptions uh specifically fierce's song and kennedy's song but i just it was driving me nuts and like people always like a, a big thing rupaul has always said to people is like you can look like the character but it doesn't matter if you can't be funny. This is probably the time more than ever is like, all that matters is if you looked like them <laughs> because you had two opportunities to answer a question. You had the opening introductions that Hollywood did with each of them. And then they had one single question where they were able to improvise and give answers. One, one, maybe there were more and they didn't make the cut. But I'm like, yeah, so any sort of preparation they had didn't matter out the window as long as I look like them. And guess what? They, did, they didn't all look like their characters. So, ugh. And the worst thing, the thing that bugged me the most didn't have to do with the musical. But every time somebody did something funny, we had to hear Brad go, uh. that laugh was like nails on a chalkboard to me. I already don't like Brad. Brad's one of my least favorite judges like across any franchise. But every time I hear to, had to hear, eh, I'm like, shut up, guy. You're already making a pretty tragic experience worse. So that's my thoughts. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh my god, okay. Um, Lana, you okay? Let this idea out of the paper. Honestly, I'm really surprised if we found out that this script was AI generated because it might as well have been. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I think the girls did the best that they could with what they were given. Honestly, this is not on them all at all. But, girl, this really was a rough spot for the franchise, for everyone. We were, we could have had either, with this top five, could you imagine how good of a musical we could have had or, or how good of a snatch game we could have had. Either. If it was just one. It would, have, it would have been impossible for it to be bad. But then they decided to do this. And um, the last thing I, I have to say is choices. <laughs> yeah. It, it was, it's sad. I, I honestly don't want to talk about it anymore. Like I'm, I'm about mad. to say, is there? Do you have a? I don't even know how you can say there's a person who clearly won and who clearly yeah. didn't. I just they sounded good that. on their tracks. All the girls sounded good. Their vocals were good. I'm I'm gonna give them that. So mm -hmm. they did. I That's, I feel like it. Yeah. Yeah. There. It is a little hard to rank everybody, but I did have things that stood out for each of them so like i'll, I'll go very quickly on um, mm -hmm. each of them i think fierce did really well she was kind of middle of the road when when you think about everybody um but i really liked her song like it gave me vogue which is all is one of my favorite uh, madonna songs it was so inspired by that she got a very good song i can't give her credit for that i mean it was the song's choice 
but what I did see from her was funny, like especially the uh, serving looks and then showing the shiny um, habit underneath that. I thought that was really funny. Um, Alexis, I thought Alexis actually did really well. Um, I thought she served some of the most energy in this musical. Um, I thought the jokes that she was able to deliver, they landed. And um, she, she really, she, I think she had a great character. And we, it's just a shame we didn't get to see it in a normal format. But I actually, like, I liked Alexis a lot more than the judges, I think. Um, Cheryl, I liked Cheryl, but there were times where she was kind of monotone when she was answering the questions. And maybe that was just the leaning into the Queen Victoria of it. But she she really did shine a lot during her performance in the musical, like when they were singing. Um, she was pretty animated. She did she did great with her song in the end. Um, I'm gonna go back around the other way and talk about Lemon. Lemon really performed well, especially during her song. She did all the splits. She she hit all the moves. I think she was the standout when it came to choreography. And that probably was the tiebreaker for me. Plus, she was pretty funny with Susan Boyle. But like I said, it was mostly just the accent. Um, but then Kennedy. Kennedy. I love Kennedy. She's done so well this season. I think she was by far the weakest in this episode. Mm -hmm. um, she did She did do her iconic move of like flipping and landing on the table that was really cool but other than that she missed so many words during the lip syncing and it was distracting and then the time she did have opportunities to improvise she butchered it like she didn't have punch lines so unfortunately she was pretty clearly the weakest in the musical uh for me so yeah but i did have a top two for me my top two would have been lemon and alexis actually Okay, I'll go real fast. Mm -hmm. I agree mostly with you. I don't. So my uh, top two would have been Lemon and Cheryl because mm -hmm. I think they were the funniest. Um, I think Kennedy for me would have been my least favorite exactly because she missed the words and she also wasn't funny on the Snatch Game part. Uh, and then Alexis and Fierce kind of tied for me for um, like between safe and bottom, you know, uh, I, 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 I would have been okay with either of them uh, being in the bottom with Kennedy. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, for me, I thought, yeah, I thought Lemon did the best um, with what she had. I didn't mind Alexis. I thought Alexis did really well as well. Um, what I did like about Fierce and doing this character with her song that is so not Mother Teresa that it made it funny that she was click clacking the fan to mm -hmm. Mother Teresa doing this song and that made it funnier for me than what I think it intended it to be. That was the one character I felt the song helped make the character even funnier than the character actually right. really was because you have somebody like Mother Teresa, the fan, and that, and that, like, like, come on, Mother Teresa don't like no fan, but she was clacking a fan, and I love that. I thought that made it funnier. I wish, only wish, Fierce would have leaned into it a little bit more, and was like, you know, Mother Teresa, she likes to serve the looks, and kind of went went there. Give me mm -hmm. drag, Mother Teresa, and but flip it in and out of it, like because she's trying to hold back because you, you can't you know you're still mother Teresa, but every now and then it just comes out girl you're like what you know and then when she did the song it's just like that's what it was released like clack 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 like i wish she would have leaned into it i felt like i don't know for me in this episode fierce felt like she was a little defeated and i don't know what it was she felt a little defeated to me watching it and i was like oh i don't know i don't know if this is just how she is or if this is just because she was in the bottom last week mm. But, um, and this what we, I agree, Kennedy was the weakest, and Cheryl, I tell, she was I, right, I guess it wasn't anything to make me go, Oh my gosh, she is so funny. I, I 
don't know her. Like I didn't watch in her prior season, so I don't know these people. I don't know what they did in their prior season. I just thought she was all right. She wasn't mm-hmm. funny, but she wasn't horrible. So yeah, right. yeah. I I I agree, but I also like. If Lemon is the clear number one and Kennedy is the clear number five, Mm -hmm. then maybe uh, Runway is a tiebreaker. And then Cheryl's not going to be in the top two at all with the Runway. Well, let's get into it and find out what we're talking about. So the category is Summer of 69. Nice. Nice. My favorite (laughs) category ever in any season of Drag Race. I'm obsessed. Ooh. Let's get into it. So full cups across the board. <laughs> uh, I did score them a lot higher exactly because I love this team. So like uh-huh. if it's giving me the I you'll see. Okay. Shout out to Logan If you watch, look over here. We'll get right. into it. You have to watch look over here to figure that out. What, mm-hmm. what, what the river's gonna do. But shout out to Logan. This is a great background. Ooh. Beautiful. I love it. Thank let's you, Logan. Keep it, let's keep it brief, keep it cute, keep it demure. <laughs> Keep it mindful. We don't, know, we don't all know what demure crispy. means. Crispy. <laughs> the crispy, demure, mm-hmm. mindful, cutesy, even. Kennedy, I mean, not Kennedy, Alexis. <laughs> I was about to call her Kennedy down for That is not, that is Alexis Montana. Long this. Period. Why does she? She does not look like herself in this specific I screenshot. She looks like a I black woman. Glasses. <laughs> I think it's the glasses. glasses. That is a black woman on the screen. And I said that when she came out on the runway. I said, who is this black woman? That is not Kennedy. Who is this black woman? Um, My thoughts on this, my brief thought, uh, this is an all-time favorite fabric. <laughs> My thought is, who is this black woman? (laughs) Who is she? Up next, we have, is this Lemon? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm correct. Y'all know, I I ain't been here. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I'm right. Lemon. Mm -hmm. Um, The makeup could use some work, but... I love this. I don't want to see any dang flesh tones. (laughs) Bride of Beetlejuice. Oh. Okay. (laughs) Miss Fierce Delicious. Out of the box? Outer space? Favorite of the night. Houston, we have a problem. (laughs) Kennedy Davenport. Period. Wig. Soul sister number one. Period. Cheryl. Simple, effective, polished. Meh. Basic, safe. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> <laughs> That's 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 that. So, um, well, but we will get into it more on look over here. So yeah, y'all need to check that out. Go watch that. Mm-hmm. But it'll, it'll drop the next day. Y'all know what to do. Y'all know how we roll over here. Mm-hmm. Um, we do have a top two for the week. After all the discussion has been said and done, and our top two of the week is. Lemon and Cheryl, and I do not agree, but okay. Mm. <laughs> I do correct, deserved. <laughs> fair, sure. I don't agree. I would have given it That's to fair. 
Lemon and Alexis, if I'm gonna be honest. Me too, me too. But our winner is Lemon. And she deserved a win. Deserve. I will she that is a deserved win. I will say that. <laughs> Making our bottom three Kennedy Davenport, Miss Fierce Delicious, and Alexis Mateo. And uh, so they go to the back and they have to talk about who's going to get the golden beaver. Who's getting this beaver this week? Mm-hmm. It's the last time we're, a beaver is going to be handed out. And you are basically taking the person who you want to see go to the finals with you if you give them the golden beaver. So Lemon had to make that decision. And we saw in the back, it was some 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 tears were shed. Kennedy Davenport, she just felt like this just was not it for her. She knew this wasn't a good day for her. She had a, it was, she just, she knows she can do better than what she did. She's like, I could do better than this. This just wasn't it. I hate this feeling. I, she was breaking down and Alexis was like, hold on, hold on now. I don't like seeing her break down because this is my girl and I need her here. And I don't want her to have a breakdown and say she want to leave or something, you know, something crazy, like send me home. So she was like, I'm, I'm, I'm nervous. I'm, I'm trying to rattle her back in. But Fierce also was just kind of like, for me, Fierce kind of was just like defeated. And I was, that is not the Fierce I watched on the Traders. And that is mm-hmm. not the Fierce I thought I was going to watch in this season. And so I was like, who is this person? I want to, you know, I don't know. What y'all have a theory. About, but. but if you want to go first, David, I have a theory as to what happened. But I mean, you can you can say it. I'm okay. Weird. So I think this is a conspiracy. The source is, are the voices in my head. So, um, I think after all of the episodes, I think by this time in the competition, Fierce had realized that she was not going to win. It, no matter what she did, she was not going to win. I think she felt that production and the judges were not featuring her and they didn't, even if she made it to the finale, that she kind of felt that she was not going to win no matter what. So I kind of feel like she was like, okay, you know what? If you're not going to give me a fair chance, why am I going to fight for it? Like, let me just, like, I've I've shown basically everything I want to show. Like, it's before the finale. So, like, you're not living for me. You're not featuring me. Like, okay, so uh, you want me to go? I'll go. That's how I feel, but I could be totally wrong. But that's what it was giving me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I see what you're saying. I think uh, in the previous episode when she chose Lemon, I think that was her go big or go home moment. And she was really counting on being able to get a win there. Um, But I think she also had some hope that uh, Lemon would view this strategically and realize it might be beneficial to keep her around. And honestly, I was also really rooting for Lemon to be strategic here because there's one thing that I do not like when I watch competitive reality TV is when people feel like they don't need to play strategy and that they should just do the honorable thing. It gets so boring so quickly. Mm -hmm. And as somebody who loves Lemon, I just want to see a little bit more spice and cutthroat behind her because this was the perfect opportunity to do it. Right before the finale, oh yeah, take out a big competitor. And she had it Mm -hmm. handed to her on a silver platter. She could have taken out one of those strong American contenders who've been doing pretty well this season, especially one of them. Uh, But she just kind of folded and took the very, very safe route. And I'm sorry, I'm jumping ahead there. But uh, yeah, I want to add something. I think she may, I agree with you, but I maybe think she did that because that was kind of what was done to her on UK versus the world one. I feel like she felt like she was taken out early because they saw her as big competition. So she didn't want to do the same to someone else. Hmm. Maybe, maybe that's a possibility, but um, I honestly think um, choosing fears like if Lemon choosing Fierce to save would have been the best thing for her in every way. 
I think. I was very gagged when she didn't. And also because Sears mentioned something within confessionals. She said, uh, so far, the golden beaver has been given to the person that, uh, that had the best critiques out of the people in the bottom. I don't see why that should change now. And honestly, that was my thing. I love Kennedy, but she did the worst out of the three people that were in the bottom. No question, period. So I think, and she's a fierce lip syncer. So I don't think it would have been bad to put her in the bottom because she is very capable of killing a lip sync, a lip sync and keeping herself in the competition. Mm -hmm. So I think maybe Lemon, um, after she saw Kennedy having that emotional moment, was like, okay, I don't want to do that to her with her being vulnerable right now. So like, I don't, I don't know. I just think, um, I wish it had gone a different way, but yeah. we have yeah. our bottom two. Yeah. The only sliver of benefit of the doubt that I'm going to give lemon and that there was any ounce of strategy here is maybe she's thinking in the back of her head that, Okay, we had an American win season one. They probably want a Canadian to take it home this time. I want to only give them one choice. They'd probably pick me anyways mm -hmm. over over Fierce. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to give them a single other Canadian to choose from other than me. So maybe right. that was in her head. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but that makes sense. We do have a lip sync between Fierce and Alexis. And they sing uh, the song from Moana that Alexis Carr actually Alexia sang. Carr. Alexia Carr, sorry. Alexia Carr sang. And it was a lip sync. It wasn't a bad lip sync. It was a decent lip sync. I just wish it was a different song. Mm -hmm. I mean, I feel like... Because mm -hmm. all... <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but when you do songs from an animated movie, that's all I see. Anybody singing it, that's all I see is Moana. And that's, that's the Moana, only thing. Though. I love Moana. I love that movie. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite Disney movies, really. It, 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 but all I see is Moana. And to see two amazing drag queens singing Moana was like, Not, so not in a bad again. way. Not in a bad way. Not in like, oh, they shouldn't be doing it. Just in a, huh, that's interesting. But I wanted to see my drag queens like singing other songs that make me go, yes, work, do it. This song made me mm -hmm. feel like they were just at a karaoke bar. And they was like, in a way that reminds me. You know, it just didn't do it for me. It didn't do it for me, but I thought they did okay. I thought one clearly outshined the other. Um, I just felt it was more karaoke bar than a drag bar and a, a drag performance. Mm. Yeah, I when I found out Alessia Cara was going to be the guest judge, I was really hoping for Stay, her song with Zed, because that's my jam. I love that song. Favorite song of 2017. Um, but um, I'm not too mad about the song that we did get because I, I like the song and at least it was the pop version and not the movie version. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think the issue is that we had two different approaches with the lip sync from the Queens. So one queen fierce uh, leaned into a very earnest um, emotional type of performance. And it just, she was treating it like it was any normal ballad, but then Alexis on the other hand, was really leaning into the, the, the theatrical um, side of it. She she knows it's a Disney song. She gave us Disney with her performance. And um, honestly, I do think that's kind of what this song needed. And I was really, I was really, I love my girl Fierce. Mm -hmm. And I was really hoping she could pull it off. But it, about halfway through, I was like, yeah, mm -hmm. no. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's Alexis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I agree. I wish it was that song as well. I wish it was Stay, but um, I love this song. Not for this. Mm -hmm. Not for this. But uh, I think they both did well. It was a good lip sync, but mm -hmm. 
Um, the fact that Alexis' outfit worked so well with the song, mm -hmm. first with uh, the, like the flowy cape, and then after like all the beats like giving ocean and the, the way it yeah. flowed, yeah. Yeah. and then when she started doing like a little samba and all that, it, it yeah, it just yeah. It, was, it was very yeah, oceanic. It took it. <laughs> it mm -hmm. Yes, she gave it. She, I was yeah, like, oh, she ate it up, I guess. <laughs> she chewed on it a little bit. She I wanted it. to see Fierce in the finale. Not that I wanted Alexis to go home, but like the top yeah. five is very good. But like I was rooting for Fierce, but unfortunately, I agree with our results. And yeah, the person mm -hmm. I wanted to go home was not an option. No. Mm -hmm. Poor Cheryl. Well, Right, well, Cheryl, <laughs> not poor Cheryl in that in her she's been doing well in the competition but poor Cheryl in that I just I like her a lot more this season but I'm still like never like I don't think I'll ever fully latch on to Cheryl as a favorite so so basically you're saying Cheryl will never get tens from you so you would never give no. her give her her tens she can get eight but she can never get your tens yeah. I love it I love that for you <laughs> sorry Cheryl you will never get the tens you can never get the tens I don't like you that much to get the tens but I no. bet she is just devastated devastated, yeah. she's just, devastated oh, that we she's we, crying we in the arms of her crying crying right right now <laughs> she's like Oh, cry me a river, please. She's so mm -hmm. sad that we won't give her her tens, but it's okay. It's okay, Cheryl. It's a lot of other people who would never get those tens either. So, mm. but that's that, y'all. Um, I don't have a draft update. I don't know mm. if anybody who has a draft update. Um, do I have one? Oh, well, do quickly, you? I want to say that I really loved it. Uh, Fierce's exit line when she said, "Well, Me too. I guess I'm changing changing my name to Fifth Licious because <laughs> mm -hmm. she's been leaning into that four fourth place. Uh, so that's also one of the reasons I wanted her in the finale. I'm like, you have to if you're gonna lose, you have to lose in the same spot you lost the first season. So right. that was kind of a bummer. Uh, but let me quickly pull up the draft. Um, I, I don't think that there's any wild changes here. Um, it looks like uh, we still have a river in fourth place. And then Brandon is in third place with 31 and a half points. Logan, ooh, Logan did drop to second place with 33 points. And we have Eve back on the top with 33 and a half points. Ooh. So I think this uh, finale is going to be pretty make or break. But if Lemon wins, which I think most people are expecting, then mm -hmm. Logan will be winning the draft. And you'll get a nice little bump, River. <laughs> we love I'll, it, oh. I won't win the draft, but I win, I will win life because I am rooting for her. So. Mm -hmm. Word. Me too. Well. Well, that's that, y'all. We are going to get out of here, and we're going to go look over here somewhere. So you can follow us and look over there as well. Um, but we'll be back next week to talk about the finale of Canada versus the World and uh, see who comes out on top in the draft, see who comes out on top on the show. Um, and uh, we'll be here to talk about it all. Um, hit the – y'all know what to do. Hit the subscribe button on your way out notification bell as well check the description box below to find out all the links to all of our other channels our patreon and our audio podcast links uh follow us on all of our socials at the cup pod on instagram tw tiktok on twitter and you can follow us if you want you see those things scrolling down there my instagram is right there yep right over there and uh keep scrolling get your cup merch period do all those things we appreciate you spending your time with us, and we'll be back next week to talk about the finale. So, cheers, y'all. Cheers. cheers. First of all, remember what you said. Oop, mic drop. <laughs> <laughs>